Hello, and thank you for listening to WRYAT, New Orleans' fifth-ranked public radio station. As always, we're broadcasting live from a prefabricated Home Depot shed located off of South Carrollton by the Popeyes. New Orleans, one of richest cities in history of world, in strictly cultural terms, of course. Over 300 years of it, and I have been here just over two months. Who am I, you ask? My name is Pudlow, travel guide and lover of all things America. So come with me and I'll show you the best kept secrets on where to party as well as what to do and see in the Big Easy. Soon you'll learn that every party time in this city has story to tell. So again, I'm Pudlow and welcome to This Place New Orleans. Greetings, comrades, and welcome back. If you have been following along, you are probably aware that I have been on a bit of groovy journey. In my last attempt to review New Orleans travel times for this fine show, I found myself doing synthetic drug and losing memory of the party times we had. No good, but once I came to, local policeman Barry said he would give me free tour of their station, including ride in real NOPD police town car. Very good. Once arrived at NOPD station, all my belongings were stored in safety locker before new visitor test, where Pudlow was asked many questions. Where from? What do? Who with? Why? But it's all part of charming local process. Besides, Pudlow has nothing to hide as famed Russian traveler in pursuit of groovy fun party times. Happy with my answerings, friendly policeman Barry allowed me to call friend of choosing. So now I'm making phone call to fellow Russian here in America, who is point of contact for all Pudlow emergency. His name is Igor Ilyusevich, and Pudlow promise you will love him big time. Uh, hello, Igor? Is this? Ah, yes. Greeting, comrade. It is Russian brother Pudlow calling from an NLPD station here in greatest city of New Orleans, which is located three miles upstream the Mississippi River from Gulf... Dos Ah, yes. Well, in search of big fun party time for radio show This Place New Orleans, I made new friend who procured ISO powder for Pudlow to sniff, but ISO make Pudlow lose all memory blackout. When Pudlow woke up, I was under a protection of NOPD police who take me to their station for tour visit. Yes, probably. Yes. What is there to handle? Pudlow enjoying NOPD jail time experience and wish friend Igor was here to share, which is why I call. Hello? Igor? <laughs> oh well, Igor lost. Now to let Policeman Barry know I am ready for continue of tour. Hello, Policeman Barry, my call is complete and I am ready for what next? All right, right this way, Mr. Pudlow. We're going to take you down to Holden while we get you into the system. You hear that, listeners? Now we make a visit to NLPD Holding, where I hear only hardest of partiers are allowed access. Let's go! Wowee! All right, comrade, Pudlow is now in cell of holding, and it is more packed with people than hottest discotheca in all of Moscow. And from Pudlow understanding, these fine folk are hardest partiers in all of Orleans Parish. They party so hard, in fact, they've been brought here to party together in safest place in town, NOPD jail. And we are lucky enough to get exclusive invite to join. Come, let us greet the local and see what all there is to do in cell of holding. Hello, fellow big-time partier. My name is Pudlow. How do you like an NOPD jail? Who the fuck you talking to? Um, you, fellow party friend. How long have you been in a NOPD holding? What the fuck is up with that accent? You Russian or something? Uh, yes. Pudlow is from small village in East Russia, but I'm here now in Big Easy documenting fun party times for radio travel show This Place New Orleans, only on WRYAT. Are you from New Orleans? Are you spying on us, you commie piece of shit? Um, no, but I am make record for purpose of learning for fellow travel fans. Hey, fuck you, buddy. My girlfriend is half Ukrainian. Uh, okay, Pudlow has many friends from Ukraine. It's a beautiful place to visit. Great party time in Ukraine. You think 
what you Russians are doing to the people of the Ukraine is a party? Fuck you, bro! But Pudlo hasn't been to Russia in months. War make travel home very complicated. You guys hearing this shit? He wants to go back to Russia for the war! No, I love America. Not war, this great place. Big Easy, a big time favorite. Ah, so y'all are coming for New Orleans next, huh? Not on my watch, you fucking Russian spy piece of shit! Hey, y'all, let's kick this dude's ass! Yes, 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 kick his ass, yes, yes! Yeah! Uh, no, please, you misunderstand Budlow. I love party time, not war. Putin is big time crazy because he never traveled. Pudlow travel all time. Fuck you! All right, all right, break it up. I ain't got time for this shit. You Russian boy, hey, get over here. Y you're free to go. Policeman Barry, so great to see you. Um, please excuse fellow party people. How come this fucking commie spy gets to get out so quick? DA called down and said to let this one go. Not worth the international shit it caused to hold him. You got fr you got some friends in high places, Mr. Pudlow. Ain't that some foreign privilege shit? Ah, uh, well, I'll catch you on the outside, you Russian bitch. Ah, well, it was nice meeting you too, New Orleans bitch. Fuck you! That's enough. Now come with me, okay? That was a very interesting experience, Policeman Barry. Thank you for opportunity. Uh, sure. Here's your belongings that you had on when you were detained. Many thanks. So what would you suggest Budlo do next in Big Easy after a fun jail time visit? I really don't care as long as I don't see you back in here. See, if you're going to go to the quarter, I would suggest that you stay out of trouble. Got it, Policeman Barry. Uh, do you... <clears throat> do you need a ride? Or do I... Should I call you a taxi? One original New Orleans taxi, please. Yeah, sure. Well, travel fans, that's all time we have for today's episode of This Place New Orleans. It was another great time in Big Easy where much it was learned. After blackout party time and quarter, Pudlow was given free ride to an LPD jail by local police officer Barry. Upon arrival, I took mandatory jail tests before receiving tour of world famous NLPD holding cell facility, where only hardest partiers in city are allowed entrance. However, with Pudlo being from Russia, the fellow holding cell party friends could tell I was not local enough, so Pudlo make leave at request of district attorney. And while fun times was had, Pudlo can assure you one visit to NLPD jail is enough for even biggest party people. Good job, NLPD. I do not want to make return to your facility as once was enough. Unfortunately, after buying ISO powder and long night of no memory party times, Pudlo is low on American rubles. But no worry, comrade, as Pudlo know exactly what to ask for when looking for party time in the Big Easy. Hey, where to? Please take Pudlo to biggest party time in New Orleans, Mr. Taxi Man. Ah, French Quarter, you got it. I'm Pudlo, and this has been number one travel show, This Place, New Orleans, only on WRYAT. And now, a word from our sponsors. Yeah, give me your pen.com. Robbing you so easy, I'm going to leave you in your underwear. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Oh, that's so good to see and hear. I have a real special show lined up. I did some organizing in the studio over the first week in the Jazz Fest, and you will never guess what I found. If you guessed an old interview with the action adventure star Steven Seagal, then you were completely correct. See, the first time I met this obnoxious man was in 1996, and he came to New Orleans to promote his new movie, Executive Decision. I wish I had made one of those to not go through with the interview. Let's just take a listen to that first interview. So, Mr. Steven Seagal, you do all your own stunts? Follow-up. How many stunts have you done? Extra follow-up. 
how many stunts do you want to do before you die? Let me stop you right there, Loop. All right. Stunts are a way of life. I've been doing martial arts for my entire life. I was doing martial arts since I was an infant, all right? I was pushing those stunts through my soul, into my hands, and into my body, okay? I'm a master at several martial arts, some that you never even heard of, all right? And music is just another martial arts for me to conquer. I will conquer all. Wowie, uh, you kiss your mother with that mouth follow-up. If she's dead, uh, don't answer. Actually, let's just get another question. Uh, you ever do a stunt and get into some legal trouble? Have you ever seen the movie Glimmer Man? Glimmer Man was supposed to have Tommy Lee Jones in it, but he dropped out. All right. It was because he couldn't do his own stunts. Tommy came on set one day when they first tried to hire him. And I asked him just to do a simple Foley shot. We See, we were trying to inject a little bit of comedy in a glimmer man. And he wanted me to fall off a chair. And everybody would laugh. And Tommy was going to do it with me. But he didn't. He dropped out because he didn't want to play Mr. Smith. All right? So, yeah. Legal trouble? I don't worry about that. Oh, so you like the cops? Like you're best friends with the cops? Listen, cops are a way of life, all right? I took a chance just like your share of Harry Lee took a chance on me. I came to Louisiana not because I'm the best goddamn nutrient killer on the planet, not because I'm a expert at every firearm, whether it's semi-automatic, fully automatic, or arrow automatic, all right? I came to Louisiana because I looked at my career at this time and I realized I could be given more and I contacted six other towns and none of them wanted me to be a deputy but Sheriff Harry Lee he said yes see that was the first time I met interviewed Mr. Steven Seagal and I was surprised I didn't think that he was the man I was going to interview. There was a, a local busker from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and even today named Step Hen Seagull. And he dressed like a giant seagull. And he danced when you dropped bread or money. He would eat the bread too. It was crazy. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Second time meeting Mr. Steven Seagal. He took his action adventure stardom from the movie screen to the television screen. He was now working with the sheriff's office in Jefferson Parish. And I say working, but from the stories that he told me and the few episodes that I saw of the TV show, he was straightforward terrorizing that parish. Y'all remember that? If not, let's take a listen. <laughs> Mr. Seagull, a lot has changed since we last spoke. No joke. You're a deputy now. Uh, do you worry about being shot and then a song that might be sung about you? <laughs> I'm, on, I'm only kind of joking, though. Loop, I'm going to stop you right there, all right? Listen, I don't just work with the police officers. I wear the police officer badge on my, proudly on my chest, and I stick my neck out there every day. That badge sits on my chest on top of three inches thick of Kevlar, all right? Not every deputy gets to wear Kevlar, but not every deputy is going like me into people's backyards, making sure crime's not happening there. Not everybody is like me going around Jefferson Parish and peeking into windows, making sure that crime's not happening in a house. And not everybody's like me going into the high schools, into the gymnasiums, and then proceeding to cut holes in a wall leading into the shower room to make sure kids aren't talking about crime in there. All right? All right, so just like a vest, you don't carry a gun, you just use your deadly hands, that's it? Listen, these hands are registered as deadly weapons with the United States of America. All right, son? These hands could kill. See, I'm an avid hunter. I don't use bullets. I use my hands. Yeah. I go out in the woods, I find small animals... And I karate chop them. Like that. All right? Uh, okay, so what patrol did you enjoy the most? Like, what was the most rewarding patrol you worked on? Not violent. Rewarding. 
There was one time, it was 2 a.m. in Metairie, outside the mall, and I saw my target. When everything around me just kind of slows down to a crawl and I know what crime is happening. And I saw her, this young woman in a Cam- Camaro, or it might have been a Camry. I don't, I don't recall those kind of details. But I saw this young woman at a turning lane. Looks like she was turning down that Severn Street. And my senses went off. And I knew this young woman was imbibing in something that she shouldn't have been. So we flipped on the sirens. And 20 minutes later, when I pulled up there with the rest of the film crew, we knew what we was in front of us. This young woman had a little bit too much to drink. And I could have just went in, as we normally do in these cases, and it made the woman lie down on the ground and hold her down until she was subdued. But I I told, I called Harry Lee personally and said, no, we are going to do this differently. And instead, I made the woman get out and walk a straight line on the middle of Veterans Boulevard at two in the morning to show her that there's a better way in life. Because it wasn't about me, Steven Seagal. It was about this young lady. And I kept her out there till six in the morning to tell her what she could be doing with her life. Okay, that just sounds very unnecessary, what you were just talking about. Uh, you know, like, I'm going to try to save this interview somehow. Uh, did you eat any, at any local establishments? I did. There's one place in particular at Jefferson Parish that I really enjoy. They only have a limited amount of things in their menu. All of them fried. All of them chicken. All of them covered in buffalo sauce. Their beer is one of their prides and joys. Just like the, the young ladies that work there. They wear the establishment's logo on their short white t-shirts and other pride. They wear the restaurant's colors of their orange shorts while they go around. And every time I go, I tell them it's my birthday and those young ladies will start singing and I put my hand around their waists and celebrate my birthday every time we go. (sighs) Mr. Seagal, you know that's a chain restaurant. It's not a local place. Like, oh, like, I'm talking about a place where the food is only found in the area that you patrol. Like, you know, Jefferson Parish, not anywhere else. You know what? How about we just play this 911 call that you brought in? You see, that was awkward, right? I wish I knew then what I'm aware of now. Why did the station ask me, of all people, to do the interview with this screwball, this martial arts moron? I'm going to be wrapping it up. Before I go, I just want to I just want to read real quick a PSA. This PSA is paid for by the law firm of Gill and T. And associates, if you or your loved ones were victims of Mr. Steven Seagal emotionally, mentally, physically, especially the sexually, you could be a part of this class action adventures lawsuit against Mr. Steven Seagal. Please call 504-233-9337 today. Well, before I get out of here, did you know that I did not one, not only two, but sadly 13 interviews before I found out that he was a musician? You see, I wish he would have just started off with that. We could have been having great interviews. He's got a bunch of songs. I had to do 13 interviews with that sadistic Zen master. So yeah, I'm just going to yip today. If you feel like yipping, yip along. Until next time, this has been Loop Guru. A yip, a yip, a yip. We now pause this programming for station identification and remind you that you are tuned in to New Orleans' own WRYAT Pirate Radio. Learn more about our programming online at WRYATradio.com and follow us on Instagram at WRYAT Radio. As always, you can listen to this and previous radio broadcasts on YouTube, Spotify, or anywhere else you download or stream podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to WRYAT New Orleans Pirate Radio. Today's No Sports are brought to you by taking a nice long break to remember why you love doing something. Hey man, there's a lot going on and life is coming at you fast now that the world's opening back up. So be kind to yourself and take some time to focus on what you love most and why. 
Welcome back, team. Long time no see. Or should I say, listen. Either way, it's Brian here, and as always, much has happened in the New Orleans sports universe since we last spoke during the apocalypse. I mean, 2021. But for every step forward, New Orleans, of course, takes two steps back, and the local sports landscape is no different. To make matters even more complicated, sports betting has recently been formalized in the state of Louisiana, so local sports fans are now even more incentivized to blow their money on frivolous assumptions around their favorite home teams, even though no one really knows what's going on. With that being said, I figured we were well overdue for a No Sports State of the Union address to help bring the No Sports fans up to speed on the ever-evolving quagmire that is New Orleans sports. So let's get into it, shall we? Following one of the most disappointing seasons since the 90s at the non-present hands of quarterback Jameis Winston, the New Orleans Saints are nearing completion on a complete overhaul of the team after losing not only our Hall of Fame quarterback in Drew Brees, but also our pill-popping, playmaking pimp of a coach, Sean Payton, both of whom have moved on to greener pastures, be it national sports media or, more than likely, an eventual new franchise in a state with better weather. However, all hope is not lost as the Saints wisely promoted defensive coordinator Dennis Allen to the head coaching position to avoid any Rooney Rule obligations, as well as drafted star wide receiver Chris Olave to fill in for the inevitable absences of our current star wide receiver, Michael Thomas. In addition to these moves, the team also reached as deep as possible into the feel-good nostalgia bag to sign New Orleans native and legendary LSU safety Tyran the Honey Badger Matthew, much to the delight of Saints fans with LSU ties. Speaking of LSU, it too has undergone a complete renovation of the football program after their historic and record-breaking championship run in 2019 was marred by scandals and a head coach that moonlighted as a swamp monster when he wasn't leveraging the perks of his position to simultaneously enhance and destroy his love life. As a result, LSU reached as deep as it possibly could into the feel-good nostalgia bag to sign the head coach of the prestigious and historically dominant Notre Dame football program, Brian Kelly. And even though Coach Kelly has yet to coach a single game as a Tiger, he has already made waves in the program by adopting a fake Southern accent and dancing to modern hip-hop music on TikTok, which many analysts agree he's just too white for. And finally, the one definitively clear bright spot in New Orleans sports, the New Orleans Pelicans. After completing their fifth team overhaul in the past three years, it finally looks like the Pelicans are on the straight and narrow after an unexpected but pleasantly surprising play-in and playoff run. This all comes at the heels of trading away the team's heart for a one C.J. McCollum, whose veteran presence has been crucial for a team loaded with an unfair amount of rookie talent. However, the green factor cannot be overstated as head coach Willie Green's halftime speeches carry the team most nights during the back half of the season. It looks like the Pelicans have finally found a coach. Now, if we could only find a Zion, then we'd really be cooking. When asked about the absence of Zion this season, team president David Griffin reportedly said that, quote, Zion will definitely be ready for next season. I pinky promise this time. I've been Brian, and this has been the No Sports State of the Union Address on No Sports. See you next time, team. Here we are again, at the 11th hour of this grand game, and the clock is ticking towards the end. You've waited your whole life for this moment. Sweat is pouring down your forehead, and the crowd watching you are holding their breath waiting. You can feel blood oozing through your veins as you know this is your moment to take that shot and let go of everything. Bud Beer, if you know that you're going to have that heart attack at Golden Corral, do it with a pud in your hand. Rise from your grave. It's time for another episode of the OCD Gamer, the show made by an obsessive compulsive video game enthusiast for obsessive compulsive video game enthusiasts. I'm Jim Lorf, and I am a diagnosed obsessive compulsive. But don't worry, I'm taking stuff for it. Over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> That's just a little joke. I, uh, I only take my SSRI once a day, and it's moderately effective at dulling my symptoms. Now, first, 
Let's start how we always do, by listing out all the Street Fighter games in existence so I can know my parents will survive for two more minutes. Street Fighter 1, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition. Oh, that's, that's a mouthful, huh? But it's worth it to ensure the safety of Todd and Linda Lord. I love you guys. Okay. So if you remember last time, I promised you that this time I was finally going to review Donkey Kong 64 for my retro gaming segment. Unfortunately, I still haven't gotten the 101% complete necessary for my review since I only had 3,432 of the 3,821 possible collectibles in the game. So I'm holding off on that review until I do that. I'm going to postpone once again. Sorry, Kong fans. If I can just get a couple hundred golden bananas, though, then I promise it will indeed be on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> By the way, this is a reminder that if you see my psychiatrist, Dr. Berkowitz, please tell her I'm reviewing Wii Fit in my retro gaming segment this month. She almost discontinued my treatment after I had a breakdown trying to get all 20,000 gems in Spyro Year of the Dragon. She's going to be really upset if she learns I'm doing another review of a collectibles game. So, mum's the word. Which reminds me, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, start. Okay, now that Dr. Berkowitz is going to be able to breathe until I think about her again, I want to get to the meat of our show. I got a guest! Specifically, I got the man behind the YouTube video game review show, Nerd Bombs! Please welcome fellow video game journalist and part-time game developer, Sean Massey. Get over here! Hey, Sean. Hey, Jim. Uh, thanks for bringing me on the show. No problem. After all, it's dangerous to go alone. Ha, that's a sick Zelda reference, dude. Yep. But before we start, let's break a bit so I can keep my parents from dying. Street Fighter 1, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 5 Champion Edition. <sighs> Whoa, uh, what was that? Oh, I just have a crippling fear that my mom and dad are going to die excruciating deaths, but I can stay that off if I name the Street Fighter games every two minutes. Holy moly. Well, I guess it's a good thing you don't have to name all the Mega Man games, huh? That's That game's got like 130 sequels or some junk. It's not funny, Sean. I'm doing my best to manage my condition, okay? Oh, um, sorry. <sighs> it's fine. Um, so tell me about your newest video game. Yeah, no problem, bro. I, I made a mobile game called Match and Sniff. It's kind of a Candy Crush style grinder where you put together items you think have the same level of smelliness together to eliminate a row. Ah, cool. You know, I once lost my college savings to Candy Crush, and my parents had to take me to the hospital for intravenous rehydration after I declined to eat for two weeks. Oh, well, uh, that, that's cool, I guess. Yeah. After that happened, my doctor and my parents forbid me from having a smartphone because of those games. I only have an old flip phone now. Uh, okay. I'm just saying this because, you know, I, I guess I won't be able to play your game. I'm, I'm sorry, Sean. Oh, that's cool, dude. I, I don't want you to upset Dr. Burkowskowitz for some silly puzzle game. Speaking of my doctor, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, start. Hey, that's the Contra code, right? Yep. It's how I convince myself that Dr. Berkowitz has extra lives despite the terrible things that could happen to her in a dangerous and unpredictable world. Wow, that's wild, man. I thought Contra was difficult, but living with OCD sounds much harder. No worries, my friend. I've got my medicine and my therapy, and as we Pokemon trainers like to say, it's super effective! Uh, yeah, uh, that's something that's in the game. So, Sean, in addition to being a game developer, you're also a video game reviewer like me. What are you working on right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oddly enough, I just finished Pokemon Legends Arceus for the Switch, and my review is going to be up on YouTube tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes, Pokemon! Gotta catch them all! Awesome! Ah, I knew a Pokemon fan like you would be excited about that. Absolutely. Uh, but unfortunately, my doctor hates them because, you know, I gotta catch them all. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, start. Yeah, I, I could see that. 
So anyway, I've been doing these reviews for about three years. and it Hold just... on one moment, Sean. Hold on one moment. Street Fighter 1, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 3 New Generation, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 5, Street Fighter 5 Championship Edition. <sighs> Saving the parents again, huh? Yep. Cool, cool. I'm just glad you don't have to name all the Street Fighter Alpha games, too. <laughs> that list is already long enough. Wait, what are you talking about? The, the Street Fighter Alpha games? They're the, the prequels to the Street Fighter that flesh out the story from before Street Fighter 2 took place? There are three main Alpha games, but something like seven oh variations. My god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I need to end the show and check on my parents. Uh, thank you for listening today to the OCD Gamer Show, listeners. Uh, join us next time when I hopefully review Donkey Kong 64. Good night! <laughs>